Hi, this is Sean. Welcome to GuitarReferenceGuy.com. Super excited about today's lesson. I'm going to be taking you through the classic song for my father by the late, great Horace Silver. This is a standard that is just iconic, right up there with all the things you are, Autumn Lee, Stella by Starlight. This is a must-know standard, especially if you're starting to play with people, you're starting to go to jam sessions. This is one of those must-know standards. A couple of the things that make this tune very accessible is that there's only, number one, there's only four chords. We have an F minor nine, E flat nine, D flat nine, and C seven. It stays in key as well. It's in the key of F minor. A couple of those chords wiggle out of the key a little bit, but not really too much. This is a bossa. So we have a bossa feel, bossa rhythm. It's at 126 beats per minute. It's a 24 bar AAB form. Melody repeats two times and then it kicks into the solos. And that's about it. What are you gonna learn in this lesson? In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play the head slash melody. I'm gonna teach you how to comp a bass rhythm, teach you the chords. And then we're also gonna go through some soloing strategies. I'm gonna teach you how to use pentatonics. I'm gonna teach you how to anchor and target the root notes of the chords. We're going to learn how to use diatonic scales, modes, and then we're going to talk about arpeggios slash chord tones, and then we're going to mix them all up. I've created a PDF for this lesson. If you click the link below, you can get it at my website. It'll make it really easy to follow this lesson. There's a lot of content, so if you have the PDF, it'll make it a lot easier to follow. I also created a jam track that you're going to hear. It's pretty simple, but it'll be a great thing for you to practice along with. That will also be at guitarreferenceguide.com. If you like what you see in this video, please subscribe. Hit the, the little bell notification icon so if I do a new video, you'll, you'll be updated. And we have a lot to do, so let's do this. Thank you so, so much for visiting me at guitarreferenceguide.com. Have a great day. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is the head. I'm going to play through the first part of the head and then break it down. Now here, I'm starting with a pickup on the and of four. And four and, and that's going to be fifth fret on the G, sixth fret on the uh, B, ninth fret on the B. Now I'm going to have this a triplet motif that's going to run through the next three phrases. And here what I'm doing is I'm playing 8th fret to ninth fret, pulling off and then pulling also off to 6. And then ending on the ninth fret of the B string. So this is on the high E string. 8, 9, 8, 6, 9. Phrase number 1. And 4, and. Now the next phrase is going to have the same rhythmic integrity as the last but it's gonna be on the high E string. And here what I'm doing, six to eight, hammering, pulling off, and then sliding to four. So, so far we have. And then the, the third phrase, uh, so uh, this last phrase, so eight, uh, six, eight, Pull off, slide to four, and then end on six on the B. Phrase number three. Phrase number f uh, 
Brit phrase number three is going to be so I'm playing off of the fourth fret of the high E string and I'm hammering onto the sixth fret of the high E string, sixth fret of the B, fourth fret of the B. And then after this, we're gonna have, and then we have one more phrase, it's gonna be our fourth. I'm gonna move up with my index finger to the sixth fret of the B and here I'm, uh, I'll play and break down. So here I'm playing six to eight hammering, pulling off and then sliding, then ending on the fifth fret of the uh, G string. So on the B string, six to eight, hammer, pull off, slide, fifth fret on the G. And then the last uh, dyad of this phrase is going to be sixth fret on the G, fourth fret on the B. So really slow. And the next phrase is going to be start from the, uh, I'm just going to play it in the breakdown. So here I'm playing 5th fret on the D, 4th fret on the D, 3rd fret on the D. Straight 8th notes. And then I'm playing another diet just like the last one, but a whole step lower. 4th fret on the G, 2nd fret on the B. And then we have uh, two more dyads. We're going to play the seventh fret on the G, sixth fret on the B, and then the eighth fret on the G and B. And that will be the first part of the head. And that's going to repeat. Now the second time it repeats, we're going to do this same dyad movement, but then we're going to come into a series of dyads that will outline the B section. So the last section we did was the A section, this, the next part will be the B section. And that's going to sound something like this. I'm going to play it a phrase at a time. Okay, so here I'm playing fifth fret on the G, fourth fret on the B, and I'm going to play a total of four eighth notes. Then I'm going to take this same diet and move it two frets lower to the third fret and second fret of the G and B. So fifth fret, fourth fret, whole step down. Now I'm going to move up to the sixth fret and I'm going to be playing the G and B the sixth fret. Now I'm going to start the next phrase from where I just left off here, the 6th fret. So here I'm playing the 6th fret, same uh, rhythmic integrity again. I'm going to hit 4 eighth notes, and four, so, and 4, and 1, and, and then I'm coming to the 8th fret of the G and B. Then I'm going to come back to the first phrase again. Then I'm going to move up to the ninth fret and I'm going to play the ninth fret on the G and B. And then I'm going to end the phrase on the 12th and 11th fret of the G and B. And then the whole head is just going to repeat again. So let me take you through the B section. So we start with the, the uh, the dyads at the 5th fret and 4th fret. Phrase number 1. Phrase number 2. Phrase number 3. Last phrase. And that will be...
be the B section. And then we're gonna repeat back to the A section. And then that whole cycle will just repeat. So you're gonna play the head a total of two times in a row, and then the solo will start. So that's the head, uh, the A section, and the B section of Song For My Father. I'm gonna play through the whole thing one more time. Okay, now for the chords of the song, comping through the tune. The first part of the tune has a bass line that's gonna be going like this. And one, and two, and one, and two. And that's the bass line playing the first fret and the third fret of the E and the A string. If you want to comp the guitar over that, um, you're gonna play this E, I mean this uh, F minor nine chord which is going to be uh, eighth fret, sixth fret, eighth fret, eighth fret. This is a little bit of a stretch, okay? But however, if you wanted to, you could just play these three notes to start. This would be your basic F minor seven chord. Now the nine chords are built on top of the seven chords. So if you can't get the nine chords, the seven chords will work fine. And the, the F minor seven chord would be eight, six, and eight. But if you can get your pinky down onto the eighth fret of the B string, that will give you your F minor nine chord. Really pretty chord. So the first part of the vamp, a basic bossa rhythm is gonna sound like this. Pick on the A string, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky are gonna go on the D, the G, and the B strings. Plug everything simultaneously, just like that. Okay. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by plucking everything at the same time. And then I'm just gonna play with my fingers. And then bass note. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And that gives us our basic boss or rhythm, which we could use to get through this tune. So if I just play through that. flat nine chord, which is going to be uh, my sixth fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, sixth fret on the G, sixth fret on the B. Now I'm just going to have one measure of the D flat nine, which is going to look exactly the same as E flat nine, but a whole step down. So I have four, three, four, and four. And then for the C7, I'm only gonna play these three notes. I'm playing third fret, second fret, third fret. And then I'm gonna hit that and then stop. So if I played a basic boss rhythm through this first part, it would sound like this. sophisticated, I'm going to add an upstroke on the and of four, and that would sound like this. Same deal here. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. Now the trick here is when you go to the and of four, you're going to make the chord change on the and of four. You're not going to stay here. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, And that would be 
playing with the and four. One, two, three, and four, and one. So those are two standard boss rhythms that you can interchange. Now, uh, for the second part of the tune, we're just gonna come to E flat and back to F minor nine. Now, the actual tune when you're playing over the head, the piano is gonna comp something a little different from that. So the piano is going to comp like this. After you hear the, it's the melodies, the, the comping is going to go. And three, and four, and one, two, three. So here I'm playing the same thing, the minor nine, but instead of playing my classic bossa rhythm, I'm waiting for the melody. two and three so it comes in on the end of two one two and three four and one two and three four one two and three four and one two and three four one two and three four and one two and three four one two and three four one and so when you hear me comping through the first part of the tune, I'm just mirroring the piano part. That's what the piano's doing. One more time. One, two. And I'm back. Now, that will totally work fine as well as doing the other bossa part. I recommend doing this part over the head and then comping the bossa sections over the solos. Now I'm gonna come through the B section and then break it down. happens it's really cool that you hear the piano do at the tail end of that over the F minor is this little lick that goes like this and that little piano part that he's playing now you could just comp F over F minor 9 and that will totally work um, for that section however if you want to get this little piano lick it's gonna sound like this playing an F minor seven, but I'm only playing the first fret on the D, the G, and the B. And here I'm playing. Ba, ba, ba. One, two, three. Then I'm putting my ring finger, this F minor seven, then I'm putting my ring finger on the four, then I'm putting my pinky on the 13. Then I'm moving over to the F minor shape, minor seven shape here, which would be here, but I'm only playing these, these three notes. So I'm playing the F, the five, and the flat seven. So I'm playing only once here, back to the F minor seven at the third fret. Same rhythm here to come backwards. That's that part. That's the part that comes right after the B section. You hear him do it on the piano every once in a while. Really, really cool. Really slow. And that would be comping through a song from my father using two different boss rhythms and the rhythm of the piano. Okay, now for the improv section, I've looped myself just comping through the A section. I'm just going to take like a really brief solo, and after I, after I go over each part, I'm just going to explain what I did. Okay, so we have minor pentatonic. So that was minor pentatonic. Now I'm going to minor pentatonic with targets, F. Gotta find my E flat. There's my E flat. Gotta find my D flat. To my C. 
Now there's no D flat in the minor pentatonic, so you have to add it. There's my F. Gotta find my E flat. Gotta find my D flat to my C. Now I'm using, now over that section, I was using pentatonics. However, I was targeting the notes as they were going by. So I was finding my Fs, finding my E flats, finding my D, adding the D flat to the minor pentatonic scale, and then ending on the C. So that's a great entry le level way to go about uh, trying to improvise over this. Once you have the pentatonic scales down, try and also do interesting things with the scales. Don't just cycle through the scale. Try and try and play with the intervals a little bit. Step number one. Step number two would be just playing modally. Now, modally, this is gonna work really well, um, but there's a couple of chords where there's a couple notes that are a little bit weird. But in the beginning, I recommend you just playing through starting with the F Aeolian scale, which is just your standard minor scale. Then it's gonna go to the E flat. So essentially you're gonna play a standard F minor scale, right? Is the same thing over the pentatonics is to target. So you're going to want to target the notes as they're moving by. So we have our F, we have our E flat, we have our D flat, and we have our C. So it's exactly the same thing as pentatonic. We're just adding more notes, and that's going to sound something like this. Last two, okay, would be, if I was going to be playing over this, this would be my Lydian. That's my Lydian scale. If I played an F minor natural scale and I started and ended on the D flat, that would be my Lydian scale. If I started on my C, that would be my Phrygian scale, and that would sound like this. And each one of those modes is going to reconcile with these chords. So one more time through that. F Aeolian. Mix Lydian. Lydian. Phrygian. Back to the F. So I think you got the idea there. Now, um, so that's a great approach. So you want to do that in all the different positions. And just find all those root notes and try and target them as they're moving. Then the next thing would be uh, probably, I think, one of the most effective things, and that would be getting familiar with the chord tones, the construction of the chords. So here, if I was to look at my, my the construction of the chords, and I was to relate them to the chords, first one would be my F minor arpeggio, which would look something like this. One flat three, five flat seven, one flat three, five flat seven, one. Now, before you get into the nines, you want to learn the sevens first, or you're just putting the cart before the horse. Okay, so now for the dominant seven arpeggio, it's going to look like this. For the E flat seven arpeggio, it's going to be one. My one would be the sixth fret of the A. My three would be my fifth fret of the D. My five would be my eighth fret of the D. My flat seven would be my sixth fret of the G, and then my one would be my eighth fret if I did two octaves. One is eight on the G, three is eight on the B, uh, my five is my sixth fret of the high E, my flat seven is the ninth fret of the high E, and then my one is the eleventh fret. And that would be my dominant seven arpeggio uh, for E flat. So first start with the uh, the basic dominant and minor seven arpeggios and then graduate to the nines. So if I was to do that and I was to kind of stay in position and play these similar uh, similar arpeggios for each one. That's a good way to start because then you're not mixing everything up. And even though you have to move a little bit, you're getting them down. That would sound like this. E flat. D flat. C. Back to the F.
that was using arpeggios, dominant seven arpeggios. Now, for the nine arpeggio, all you need to do is add a whole step above your target, and that is the nine. So for example, if I was playing an F, my nine would be my, uh, my nine would be my G. So if I play this arp, the dominant seven arpeggio here, one, flat three, five, flat seven, and one, right? Um, if I want to go to the nine, my nine will be right here. So now I'm gonna play one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, and one. If I came to the E flat nine, one, flat three, five, flat seven, nine, one. So one more time. So if I did that with the, uh, if I did that playing through the arpeggios, it would look like this. have to discuss in terms of improvising over this tune are the chords that are slightly out of key. Now, obviously, the F minor is in key, the E flat is in key, you have an E flat 7 in the key of um, F minor, the D flat 9 or D flat 7, this is where we have a slight modulation. Typically, um, in this key or always in this key, we would have a C note. And so then the resulting chord here would be a D flat major seven. But here we're playing a D flat seven slash D flat nine. And in this case, the only note that comes out, if there's no C, there's a B. There's no B note in the key of F minor. There's modulation number one. So how do you tackle this? Well, the chord tones work fantastic, or just the standard Mixolydian scale for that given chord would also work really well. I encourage you to do the chord tones first. They just work really well. Now, the next one will be the C7, the key of F minor. The five chord will be C minor seven, okay? So here we have a C7. So which note is out of place? This E note, okay? There's no E in the key of F minor. There's an E flat. So what could we do here? A couple of things we could do here. Obviously, the chord tones, we can play standard chord tones like you learned earlier, one, three, five, flat, seven, one. Um, we can play a mixolydian scale. C mixolydian will work fantastic. Um, and then the last thing we could do is we could just add this E note, take the E flat away, and all of a sudden we have an F uh, harmonic minor scale. Very exotic sounding, extremely cool. is. And there's our F harmonic minor scale. So those are a couple of the exemptions to the key or a couple of the slight modulations within the key. But they happen so quickly that I think at this stage of the game you don't have to worry about them too much. But once you're able to play everything that we discussed in this lesson, you're very comfortable, then I would start looking at those uh, those slight modulations and try and make a point of hitting them when you're improvising just to kind of imply the chord a little more. Thank you so much for checking out my video at guitarreferenceguide.com. I hope you enjoyed this content and if you like more, more videos will be coming. So look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Thanks again.